I'm joined now by artist Felicity Radicek. Felicity, I cannot wait to talk to you because your art is so cool and so different than anything I've ever seen. You are a pyrographer. Correct. First of all, we've spoken to, to another pyrographer, but, but tell people what, what that is. Um, I use a wood burning tool. My particular wood burning tool has variable temperature control and interchangeable tips so that I can uh, switch out my tool based on the effect I'm trying to create. And my particular niche is burning on dried Ganoderma aplanatum bracket fungus or artist conchs. So to the lay person, to me, I came in and said, oh my God, you burn mushrooms. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what most people. <laughs> okay, how does one even begin that type of creative outlet? Um, honestly, I think I saw the lady on Pinterest. Um, I believe she's from England somewhere a couple years ago, and I just a picture came up on my Pinterest. She was burning mushrooms on mushrooms, and I thought that's really cute. And then I forgot about it. Um, then my mom asked me what I wanted for Christmas and I initially said guitar lessons and then abandoned that because it would have never gone anywhere. And I asked for a wood burning set instead. Um, I go on a lot of hikes so I found these mushrooms and I had harvested one and initially I was etching on them. Um, the pore surface when it's in the active growth phase is soft and if you touch that white pore surface it bruises so you can etch designs on it, hence um, artist conch. Um, but when you harvest one of those off the trees in that active growth phase, you have about two days for that surface to be viable. So if I didn't know exactly what I wanted to put on it, right. before I harvested it, I was up on a time crunch. Yeah. And I've got a job and kids and that wasn't working. Right. So I thought if I can burn on these, that'll give me a lot of extra time and a lot of extra time to think and plan what I want to put on these. Okay, so that kind of leads me to uh, the, I, I jumped right to the pyrography, but mm -hmm. you are an artist um, and, and have been for long before you started uh, that particular medium. Yes. So uh, tell me when you, when you realized that, that you were an artist. I have always liked to draw. Um, my mom kept a whole box of things from as soon as I could hold a crayon basically, yeah. but I've always loved to draw and color and I also do acrylic painting. I imagine that that is especially helpful when it comes to wood burning. Yes. Um, so tell me a little bit about your process. So once you have harvested mm -hmm. the artist conch, you you have a couple days for it to be porous and then it, it's, it hardens like wood. Yeah, um, the artist conch is a parasite. It pulls the lignans from the tree, so it's basically kind of turning itself into wood. So I, if I'm not convinced that it's dry, I let them dry out in my garage for a couple weeks, and then I can burn on that hardened white pore surface. Um, I like it because I can burn at a lower temperature, mm. which saves my tools and less heat on my hands. Yeah. Um, so yeah. tell me how you go about doing a piece of art on a mushroom. Do you sketch it first? Do you, uh, I'll, I'll just let you tell me. <laughs> yeah, um, it's it's art without a safety net. Uh, I trace the shape of the mushroom first and then I sketch out what I want to do. And then I have an etching tool, which is basically a picture nail jammed into a um, <laughs> mechanical <laughs> pencil uh, so that I can hold it. Yeah. And I sketch out the basic outlines onto the surface. And then I use um, a blade tool on my burner to kind of put in the initial lines and then swap out my tools as needed. How long did it take you to kind of get that process down? Were, were you good at it right away? Or I imagine there's kind of a learning curve. There is a learning curve, especially with the heat settings. Mm. Um, scorches at a much lower temperature. So um, I have a kind of a throwaway mushroom that I always test my heat settings and my blades on before I put any marks on my actual piece just to see what's gonna happen. So it almost, <laughs> looks to me, I don't have any tattoos, but we've interviewed tattoo artists and they do the, like lots of little pokes. Mm -hmm. 
that's sort of what it looks like. Am I am I completely off my rocker, or is that maybe a little bit? That's what that black background is okay. that I do. Okay. That's a little. It's yeah. a ball tool. Every every single one is a choice where I put that. Um, so that takes a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what inspires your work? I noticed that obviously there's a lot of nature. Um, is that is that your your greatest love? Yeah. I would rather be outside than inside almost any day of the year. Um, I take a lot of pictures while I'm out. I like macro photography, a little lens that goes on my phone. So oh, cool. I take a lot of the pictures that I um, use in my work. And how so, yeah. do you translate those pictures into a sketch and then a, into what is ultimately the mushroom? Um, most of my pieces are on commission and I work on them one at a time and that's really fun because people say can you combine this subject matter and this subject matter these are really important to me and then I can kind of go to my photo bank and just based on the shape of the piece which everyone is different it's a very organic one-of-a-kind canvas yeah. um, and just kind of think through okay this is the shape this is what they want um, this will flow I often ask artists who have made their artwork their business if that takes some of the joy out of it. Is it is it tough to to do commission work and and then also to have it be a business? Um, I worried about that too. It helps me if and I know all the artists in the business are like that's really stupid, but I don't like to take payment until I'm finished because uh. if I've taken payment before then it does feel like a job and it feels like I'm up against a deadline mm -hmm. and then I do drag my feet. Yes. Um, so if I haven't taken payment and if they've given me kind of a free hand with it, then I still feel the joy of creating it and I still really enjoy the process and the troubleshooting and the, yeah. the, whole, the whole thing. I have really focused on your pyrography just because it absolutely fascinates me, <laughs> but you you mentioned that you also paint, you draw. Mm -hmm. What uh, what brings you the most joy? Just creating something that wasn't there before. Mm. Just quantifiable success, being yeah. able to have something that was in my head be in front of me. When I look at your drawings and at the pyrography, what really strikes me is the detail. Um, I mean, everything is so detailed. And, and you love macro photography, so that kind of stands to reason too. <laughs> yeah. So have you always just been all about detail? Yeah, I've tried to do different styles and like more modern or impressionistic. I just can't do it. Yeah. Like, like if it's not detailed, I'll think about it and I'll come back to it and I'll put, I'll put the detail in. <laughs> like I just can't leave it alone. <laughs> what is the hardest part of creating, especially your, your detailed pieces? Mm. Knowing when to walk away, mm. especially if I'm working from a picture that someone has given me um, because they can refer back to that picture, which I like, that's why I like to take the pictures myself. Mm -hmm. um, that way they can't see where I've put that out of place or right. where this is out of proportion. Right. Um, yeah, just knowing when to walk away um, when one more line will ruin it. Yeah. A lot of artists tell me that where you don't really know when to stop. Do you ever have a sense of like, ah, oh, yes, it's complete or do Occasionally. you? Occasionally. Okay. <laughs> I take a lot of pictures um, and then I go to bed and then I look at the pictures and that way I can kind of see, okay, my lights and my darks, my values, all the composition, am I okay with it, am I not, and then I can, then I can rest easy. <laughs> it sounds like um, you are a very educated artist. Did you go to school for art, or was this something that you, are you self-taught? Um, like I said, I've drawn in my free time almost my whole life, but I do have my bachelor's degree from Iowa State University um, in fine arts with interior design, and I had to take a lot of regular um, core art classes and drawing classes and things with that. So, so that, kind of. Yes, so that both. helps. And now logistically, how you said you love to hike, mm -hmm. where do you find your <laughs> giant mushrooms? Yeah, um, they tend to grow on trees that are already in distress or that have already fallen down. 
Um, there are a couple species that they seem to like. Uh, the cottonwood is one. Um, once the tree has fallen down and starting to lose its bark, I I'm not sure what kind of tree it is, yeah. but um, I'm constantly scanning and looking as I'm hiking. Obviously, nature preserves are a no-no because you can't harvest there. Right. Um, but some of the places around allow you to purchase a mushroom hunting permit, or you can do that if you have a membership there, which I do mm -hmm. at some of the places. So, yeah. Is, is what you end up uh, burning into the mushroom really, uh, d does the mushroom ever tell you what it needs to be? Sometimes, yeah, um, based on the shape or based on where the, in, I call them inclusions, um, sometimes sticks or pieces of grass or things have grown through the oh, mushroom yeah. um, because that's a kind of a fluid surface when they're growing and yeah. they kind of form around things. Um, so sometimes I have to work around a hole or a bump and based on the shape of that and the location of that on the piece, I can kind of work it into the design, which is really fun. Yeah. It's really fun when that's a success. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously you have a very interesting aesthetic. Is there something else you want to try? Is there something <laughs> um, that would that would marry your love of nature and art um, that you that you haven't done yet? Oof, that's a slippery slope. <laughs> I have so many art supplies and my husband's like, oh my gosh, you focus on one thing. I'm yeah. like, I can't. Yeah. Um, I've just kind of reined myself in and I, I would like to try everything just to say I can do this. Yeah. Like I know I can do this, but at some point you have to be like, pay the people who are already good at it to do it. <laughs> <laughs> just buy the thing. Don't buy the craft supplies. <laughs> yes. I, yeah. That's me. <laughs> yep. Felicity, your work is so cool and so different and just absolutely beautiful. Thank you for taking the time to sit down with me today. Thank you so much for having me.